Howdy, folks. Today, we're starting up a little four-part series on the behind the scenes for an audio drama I worked on called The Most Important Passover with the Audio Drama Alliance. So this part, we'll be looking at the Foley and kind of the recording process for that. There's a link in the description so you can go listen to the full thing. Let's hop in. For this project, uh, each character has both a hand track, foot track, and then another hand track and a foot track. I'll get into more of why that is later. And then I had the prop tracks down here. Most of this was a background heavy um, project, but there was definitely some foley that needed to happen. Most of it was basic, but the most complicated scene I probably had was um, scene six here where uh, Hada cooks for basically like a minute and a half. And there were some prompts in the script for kind of the things she's doing, the meal she's preparing, a part of Passover. Um, but a lot of it was still left up to imagination. <laughs> and so... I wasn't really sure what to do with it, but I thought through, kind of took some cues, thought up some um, different props that could kind of serve the purpose for the story. So I was like, oh, partially. And I'm like, for some reason, I'm hearing cilantro in my head of how it would sound if you cracked it. So I had my wife pick up some of those and compiled all the props together, got some wood bowls, knives, um, all sorts of stuff, and then kind of thought through the script, listened through it and sort of staged out what I was going to do when and kind of did some practice tests and practice runs to kind of see how the timing landed. Um, so it kind of, I was trying to record it all in one take. I should have probably split it all up, but for time, I didn't have a whole ton of time. And I was like, I'm just going to do several takes of this. And it was starting to, you know, line up pretty well. So I have a little behind the scenes clip of this. I did end up editing the Foley in the final product, but this is just the raw um, video with the Foley with also the uh, dialogue as well. Moshe and our son Judah have gone back to the temple with our lamb, Shmuzel. Let me tell you a little about the feast while we wait for them to return. Like everything, there is a specific menu to our Passover meal, or Seder. They are from the writings of Moses, so we've been doing this a long time. There's four cups of wine, plus one we pour for Elijah, who we always hope will show up. We also have parsley, which represents the hyssop that our ancestors used to apply the lamb's blood to the doorposts. Salt water represents the tears they shed while in bondage in Egypt. Then there is this mix here. It's called kerosene. It's a mixture of nuts, chopped apples, cinnamon, and wine. This represents the brick and mortar that the Israelites made in Egypt. Bitter herbs are like the bitter lives they lived as slaves. I have to boil an egg later. I don't really know why. When Moshe gets back, we'll roast the lamb and eat that, just like that first Passover. Then there are three mozzas, unleavened bread that we eat. Tonight, we'll gather here. Our youngest son, Levi, will ask us a series of questions about why we do what we do. Moshe will answer them for him. We'll eat and then sing a Hallel, Yes, it's a lot of work, but it's worth it. Passover is a great feast. My approach for mixing the Foley for this specific project, uh, since I had all of the hand and foot tracks together, I then routed those through a routing folder. That way I could just put one EQ on there and then all of my painting and volume automation affected both the hand and the foot track together. Uh, so you can kind of see that here. We have them painting in, and then I also have the EQ here that I um, roll off some of the highs and lows. And you can kind of see uh, how I bring the character in. Then bring them out. So the trick of, you know, mostly just rolling off lows, a little bit of the highs, and then the panning and especially the volume really tricks our brain into being like, oh yeah, I can see that character running off screen. So for this part, it's a similar approach, kind of just on its head. So a character is outside and they're coming inside. And so you want to hear their footsteps approaching the door and then the door opens and then they enter in. 
So I'm just mostly just rolling off the highs, not any lows. For the temple scene um, with the money changers, I was able to find some sounds for like people scrambling and picking up coins and stuff, but I wanted to record his specific. Uh, and so I had my like stone surface and I was tossing the coins and trying to you know pick them up on there. And I was getting a lot of like tonal sound from the rock. And so I, all I had to do was just kind of throw a weight on there. I kind of put my knees and <laughs> balanced myself to put weight on it. And that took care of the resonance on it. And then it was just trying to find the right sounds to sound like you're picking up a coin and how it sounds in your hand as other coins get muted. Um, took a little bit of experimenting as most fully does, uh, but it worked out well. I did record some extra scrambling sounds of folks uh, picking up coins as well. Painting those left and right. And then that was also combined with some sounds that I cut in as well. For the scenes that had lots of crowds in them, I'll get into doing all of the loop group and crowd-based stuff in another part. Um, but I did record some crowd footsteps. I wasn't really happy with what I had in my library. Um, so I uh, decided to try a little bit of technique of putting on two different shoes to just change up the texture. I wasn't really walking any specific pattern. I was just trying to create a background bed of just movement. Um, some of these scenes have lots of scuffling. Some of them, you just want to hear the crowd surge a little bit. And so I would listen through and I ended up recording four takes so that I would be able to pan um, some like have a good layer both left and right. If I just recorded one, um, that obviously wouldn't be very much. You do two. It's like still pretty thin. So I ended up recording four and uh, would pan some far right and left and then a little bit closer. And that just kind of helped bring up uh, the sound of the crowd and the movement of the crowd. Some of the lessons I learned in the Foley part of this project, I always record too much of the hand track. I think some of it is coming from some of the film based stuff. I'm almost doing a cloth and hand track at the same time. And it just becomes way too noisy when you get into the mix. So I'm usually chopping and chopping and chopping and just finding very specific moments. So I started out recording way too much. And as I went, I kept remembering like, oh, I know I need to record less. I know I need to record less, be more intentional with when I use it. Don't emphasize every single line, pick which lines you want to emphasize. Um, so I got better as I went with it. And I could tell that when I got into the edit, you're like, oh, there's way less just like loud noise with everything that they're saying. Um, but yeah, definitely be intentional uh, with what you're recording with your hand track. And that's something I'm still growing and learning. And be sure to check out the full audio drama. It's free. Link is in the description. And part two will be coming out in a couple weeks. We'll be going over the crowds and loop group. So catch you in the next one. <laughs>